Hello there and welcome back to Bolter Bucks. My name is Steven Bresnall and today we're going to do Savage Access versus Ruger American. Which one is better? Let's find out. So 200 yards. Beautiful. At the rear. So the recoil pad on the Savage Access. Uh, it's stiff. It's got holes or venting in it. Um, it's stiff. It's not too firm but it's not too smushy either. It's kind of in between. Now let's go to the Ruger American. I, real smushy, real smushy. Um, you know, I just like the feel and the softness uh, of the Ruger American better and having shot both, which we will show here in a little bit on this video, um, in the field, I feel like this one, uh, the Ruger Americans reduces recoil a bit more. Moving forward, you have a polymer stock. Feels hollow here in the back. Let's try and see. Now I do have a cheek rest on this one, but there's a tie there as far as the polymer involved. I don't feel one polymer is better than the other with these. They both are very, very close and very similar in that way. Um, both just cheap polymer stocks. Moving forward to the trigger guard, um, it is plastic and it is a separate piece from the stock on the Savage. So I guess if it broke, you could replace just the uh, trigger guard possibly on the Savage, which might be better. Um, yeah, on the Ruger, it's just plastic built into one piece into the stock, but both are plastic. So pretty much the same thing there. Now moving forward to the magazine, let's go back to the Savage Axis. Now, this has a polymer bottom, but stamped metal sides on the Savage Axis. Um, it has like a push button release design here. It's pretty robust, but it is plastic. Um, and it looks like it has a plastic follower. Um, you know, having used it, it works fine. It's, it's a, a staggered stacking, but, and it's not rotary. Um, it's not bad and it works. So nothing really bad to say there. Let's see how it goes in and out. Okay, so it takes a little bit of like thought to put this in. It's like, it's it's pretty intuitive, it's pretty easy, um, but it's not quite probably as easy as a Ruger. Let's check it out here in a second. It does lock firmly in place and it doesn't have a lot of wiggle on it. It looks nice. Now let's go to the Ruger American. All right, so this one's a little bit more flush. It does stick out just a little bit on the rear, it looks like. It is a rotary, very small, compact magazine. Now, one thing that I like is this one holds four, and this Ruger, or excuse me, and this Savage only holds three. So this is actually 270, and the Savage is a 6.5 Creedmoor, and this Ruger American actually holds one more round in the mag. Um, the downside is to this tab is really chintzy and flimsy. Um, I'm not sure how that would hold up in the long run, but it seems to work fine so far in testing. It has all plastic components except for it looks like metal springs. So um, I would like to see more metal in this, but at the same time it works beautifully. I haven't had any issues yet. So it does seem to go into place just a touch easier. It's it's a little harder to get your finger on the tab to release it. So I would say putting it in place is, is just, it feels so natural, it feels so good, it's so easy to put this in. It just it just seems to wanna go in, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, probably because the rotary design and how it's uh, curved to just slide right in place. Uh, re getting it out, um, maybe just a touch harder than the Savage, but I, 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 I gotta say overall, I actually do like the, the design and the fact that it can hold four rounds. 
um, better than the uh, Savage design on the axis. Now let's take a look at the forend of these stocks here. I mean, they're so similar. Um, they're both free floated. Uh, quite a bit of wiggle though. If you put any kind of pressure on the forend of this stock, it makes contact with the barrel. Let's see, I don't have a bipod on this, so it's a little harder. Okay, so I would say it's a little bit slightly more rigid on the Ruger American, not a lot, but I would say the foreign slightly more rigid than on the Savage Axis. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, uh, safety. Both have a tang safety right here at the rear. Um, this one feels really cheap. It doesn't really stick out. It's it's easy to use. It has a red dot to indicate that it's on fire at the rear, but it just kind of, I don't know if you can hear that. If there's a lot of slop in it. And let's go back to the Ruger American. Now this safety is raised here so you can catch it with your finger a lot easier and not slip off of it. It has a, uh, a red F at the uh, back to say that it's on um, it has a red F here to indicate that it's on fire. Um, on safe, it has a black S stamped into the metal here. Um, it does seem like it has metal underneath. The button itself is plastic, but there's no wiggle, there's no slop in it. It's a little bit louder, but you can manipulate it slow. Definitely feel like the safety um, itself, as far as the button, you can call it, uh, is is better. So the tank safety on the Ruger American just seems to have a higher quality than on the Savage Axis. Um, one thing you'll note here is on the Savage Axis, which I've already made sure this is empty multiple times, as there, when this metal piece is out, it's indicating that the firing pin is, is let, ready to go. It's loaded, it's cocked. Um, when you release the trigger, that goes forward. So it has a cock indicator built into the rear of the bolt. Double check and make sure that one's empty one more time. Here, on the Savage, there is a piece of metal that sticks out directly out of the back of the bolt. And so you can use that as a cock indicator, but it's a little bit harder to see, especially in low light. Coming forward to the receiver. Um, the receiver is milled flat on the side of the or at least on this side of the receivers to shed weight which is nice it's held in with a barrel nut so it's easy to change out the barrels um it has a lot of machining marks on the outside of it but let's see here and compare it to the ruger american um you know this one has machining marks too um i just feel like when you look at it, you just, it, it feels and looks like this, it feels, it looks like the one that is on the Savage is like a piece of bar stock that was machined, whereas this one's forged and it just has better lines to it and seems a little bit thicker and more robust. It's like a more robust looking receiver, looks a little bit higher quality, but really I would say, you know, they both function just fine. Now let's take a look at the actual bolt. To release the bolt on the uh, Savage, you have to depress a little tab here on the side of the stock and the bolt, and excuse me, and depress the trigger, and then the bolt comes out just like that. On the Ruger American, it has a bolt release on this side of the receiver. Let me see if I can show you it better. Right here. Um, you depress that and the bolt comes right out. The bolt release on the Ruger American just has the feel of being higher quality. It's less complicated. You don't have to press a trigger and this bolt release tab down, and it just, it's just better. Okay, let's just say it, it in my opinion, it is, is far better um, and, and simpler and better design than the Savage Axis. Now, let's take a look at the bolt on the Savage Axis. Um, it is two lug design, has a extractor and plunger ejector. 
Um, the extractor is built into the lug on the bolt and it has a free floating bolt head, which can, can contribute to a rifle being more accurate. Coming, it is a 90 degree bolt throw, by the way, on the Savage. Coming to the Ruger, wow. I mean, look at the size difference. And this is a 270. So the Ruger American bolt is just a massive hunk of a badass. I mean, this thing is heavy duty, it's rugged, it doesn't look like it would ever break. Um, it does have an extractor built into the recoil lug, but it has three, or excuse me, into the uh, <clears throat> bolt lug. It has three lugs, and those three lugs allow this bolt to only need 70 degrees of lift to be manipulated. So you only have to manipulate this 70 degrees, and the Savage is 90. So if you have a very low mounted scope, or if you want to just have a little bit tiny easier uh, manipulation of the bolt, or maybe a little bit faster, this one should inherently do that for you. It has less bolt lift required to operate the bolt. Um, like I said, the biggest advantage is going to be if you have a scope that's mounted really low um, with a big objective um, or eye box, the Savage may uh, hit it, the bolt handle may hit it, whereas on the Ruger it shouldn't. So I would say the quality of the bolt is better on the Ruger American. Both have machining marks. I would say the machining, the finished job of machining on the Savage is better and it does have this cool little, you know, Savage on it. Um, it's, it definitely seems cleaner like they've, they've polished it and it's just much cleaner machining job though than on the Ruger American. It kind of has a zipper uh, machining marks on it. The bolt shroud on the Ruger American is plastic and the way this, and the bolt handle is one piece that goes all the way through the other side. The bolt handle is very heavy duty, well made, um, but I hate the way the firing pin comes out of the Ruger American. It's very complicated. It, it's some, it, you can do without special tools, but it's a lot easier with special tools. It's definitely harder than a Howa 1500. It's definitely harder than a uh, Remington 700. Um, it's definitely harder than a Tika. So kind of a pain to take apart the bolt on the Ruger American. It's, it's a little bit easier on a Savage, but once again, it's not great. Let's see how they run. Run it and it comes up very easily. It hits a really hard wall and then it unlocks, comes back. Wow, that's really smooth. I gotta say, man, Savages run really smooth as far as back and forth in the receiver. That is, for a sub $400 rifle, that's smooth. I mean, it catches a little bit, but that is pretty smooth. Um, I would say the lift right there, it's, I call it like the Savage secondary catch. It's like you lift and then, mm. most bolt actions have that, but it's just not as noticeable. Now let's go to the Ruger American here. A lot less lift, and I would say it's easier to lift. It's a lot louder though. Come back, ooh. I mean, significantly louder. And just a little bit more gritty feeling. Let's see if it can pass the glide test. Barely. Not really. It doesn't really want to glide back unless you really give it a good jerk. So, I mean, it operates just fine. The bolt lift is definitely better, being 70 versus 90 degrees. The bolt uh, unlocks up or comes out of battery easier. Um, but the actual sliding back and forth is definitely smoother on the uh, Savage Axis. The Ruger American Barrel, this one happens to be 22 inches. If you get the Predator version, it's uh, also 22 inches, but it's a heavier contour. It's, I believe this is a contour number two, and it's uh, Cold Hammer Forge. It's very accurate. So Ruger Americans are known for being very accurate for their price point. Um, I believe the Savage is button rifled, if I'm correct. And um, so they're both very accurate. Just one is different than the other. I'm not gonna get into which one's better than the other. You, there, you know, there's pluses, minuses to both. Now let's go ahead and take the uh, barreled actions out of the receivers and actually see uh, what the difference is in batting and how they work. So this is the Savage Axis. And uh, much like a Tika T3X, we have a piece of metal 
um, in the stock here that acts as the recoil lug against the receiver of the rifle. Um, now, it also does have metal pillar bedding in here. So it has metal pillar bedding and a metal recoil lug that is separate from the receiver. I personally do not like that. I, I like having the recoil lug be part of the receiver, but you just don't see that on these cheaper rifles usually. Now, you'll see the reinforcing in the uh, Savage is kind of just a, a crossways this way and crossways this way. It's not like an X like it is on the Ruger American, which you'll see in a second. The stock flexes quite a bit. Of course, it comes with a front and rear swivel sling stud as well as the Ruger American does. That kind of goes without saying. Um, now let's take a look at the Ruger American stock. All right, so you have X uh, reinforcement here and it is more rigid bedding that uh, Ruger advertises. It's basically a V bedding. Um, it looks like aluminum goes through all oh, metal all the way through where the action screws go And that butts up right against the receiver in the front and the rear um, Definitely a lot better bedding system than the Savage Axis uh, uh, more consistent more repeatable um, less um, Chances of it being shifted or moved like in this thing if this comes loose or if this shifts that can uh, cause huge accuracy issues in your rifle. Whereas if you have two pieces like this bedded in there and they are just a lot bigger and heftier and they go right into the action screw area, uh, I just think that's a lot better bedding uh, system. Let's take a look and I'll show you here. This is where those V bedding uh, aluminum blocks go on the Ruger American. They tuck right into those grooves on the receiver holding it firmly in place. On the Savage, that one recoil lug, so essentially the Ruger American has two recoil lugs built into where the action screws go. On the Ruger American, <clears throat> on the Savage Axis, excuse me, you have uh, basically just this bar stock receiver where it's milled out um, and you can actually see the threads of the barrel for the barrel threads um, inside there. Um, and that's where the recoil lug sits quite shallowly. Um, so, just not a, not a great system there. So now let's take a look at the triggers. You have the trigger on the Savage Access. Now this is not the AccuTrigger. Really the only big difference uh, <clears throat> is that it has a blade in it and the AccuTrigger and a little bit different mechanism. And is of course adjustable. On the Savage Access, it has this big spring at the rear and so on and so forth. I do not care at all. This is held on with a pin and I just do not care at all how this trigger is designed. It works fine, but it's very open. There's lots of areas for dust and dirt and things to go wrong. Um, but we'll talk more about how they actually feel compared to each other here in a second. Um, now the Ruger American comes with an adjustable trigger um, that adjusts, I think, three to six pounds. Now I try to adjust this much, many, many times and I couldn't get it to adjust below three and a quarter pounds. <clears throat> it looks, you know, has the middle blade. It's a single stage trigger. Um, the housing on this is incredible. It's, it's much more robust than even the AccuTrigger um, and just the design and materials used are, I, I feel, higher quality the, than the AccuTrigger. However, the actual functionality and how it feels is not any better than the AccuTrigger. It has an adjustable set screw here in the front. The Savage Axis, which is what I have, not the Axis 2, which really the only difference is going to be the AccuTrigger. Um, is a single stage trigger as well, but it, it, it comes from the factory at about four pounds and you can't really adjust it unless you uh, reduce the spring, which I do not recommend. So <clears throat> now that we've gone over that, let's go ahead, put them back in the stock. And like I was saying earlier, the trigger guard is a separate piece on the Savage Axis, which if you look right here, this has to take your recoil right here, and it's a very thin, flimsy spot. Uh, I could see this definitely being an easy spot for this, this stock to break. Um, so is it nice that you could replace the trigger guard if it broke and not have to replace the whole stock? Yes, but I feel like you're taking chances with the uh, integrity of the stock with you have that separate piece there. All right, so... Let's go over and see how these triggers actually feel compared to each other. <clears throat> we'll make sure, confirm this is empty. I already did that off camera before this even started. 
Okay. All right, a uh, noticeable amount of creep and a little bit of grit before it goes off. Um, barely any over travel though. I, I really like the that there's not a lot of over travel, but it does have a pretty noticeable creep. Um, like I said, it, uh, after adjustment, it broke at three and a quarter pounds. Before adjustment, it broke at three and a half pounds. Now let's try this Savage Axis. Now, I understand that you can get the Savage Axis too for probably the same price point as the Ruger American, so uh, take this for what it is. Let's make sure it's empty. I'm gonna put a trigger gauge on this one because I don't know for sure where it's gonna break. Three and a half pounds. So uh, three and a half pounds on the Savage Axis um, and three and a quarter pounds on the Ruger American. A lot of creep. A lot, way, way more creep on the Savage Axis. Now the Accu Trigger, no, I would say the Savage Accu Trigger and the Ruger Marksman Trigger are are equal. But the regular Axis Trigger, I would say, has way more creep and over travel and grit than the Ruger American. Both come in now. Now that we've gone over all of the feel and so on. Uh, the finishes on both of them are, are matte black. I mean, they both seem resistant to rust and corrosion about equally. <clears throat> you know, they come in tons of different calibers. Um, you got uh, uh, plenty to choose from, different types of models as well. So different models and calibers, there's lots of combinations out there. The Savage Axis comes in at a weight at, of 6.3 pounds, and the Ruger American comes in at a weight of 6.2 pounds. So really close there. Um, the mag capacity is 4 on the Ruger American and three on the Savage Axis. The overall length is 42.5 inches on the Savage Axis and it's 42.5 inches on the Ruger American. They are very similar rifles. I just feel like Ruger does a little thing, a couple of things better. The, the materials used and uh, design, I feel like are just better on the Ruger American and the fact that they just shoot lights out. They do a great job. Um, but you know what? They're both great rifles. The, the Savage Axis II uh, and the Ruger American are both great rifles. Just remember, if you get the regular Savage Axis, it won't have the AccuTrigger. Hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to hearing back from you in the comments section.